Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to keep your pets safe and cared for if something should happen to you during this pandemic, or any time really. Did you know that over 70% of Americans don't have an estate plan? You may think you don't need one, but if you have a pet, you should have a plan in place, whether informal or formal, to ensure that they are cared for if you're suddenly not able to be there yourself. First, consider carrying a pet alert card in your wallet. This alerts someone that your pets may need short-term care if you're in an accident even while just out running errands. You can print a free one off of the ASPCA website or create one yourself. Second, in case of a fire, it's a good plan to have a pet alert sticker on a prominent door or window that lets firefighters know how many pets there may be in your home. Third, it's not fun to think about, but you should have a plan in place for your pets should you encounter a long hospital stay or if you unfortunately pass. Thousands of pets end up in shelters every year because people pass without having a place for their pets to go. I've asked my friend Michael Drabant, an estate planning attorney, for more information on how to ensure your pets are cared for. Hi, my name is Mike Drabant. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Wilson & Wilson Estate Planning and Elder Law. I was asked to put together a short video discussing estate planning with pets and the basics of pet trusts. So simply put, a pet trust is a mechanism that allows for the comfort and care of your animals after you have passed away. When I'm working with my clients who own pets, we're usually looking at two main aspects associated with pet ownership. So the first is when they die, we need to have a caretaker, someone that will, where the pet will live and that person will be in charge of the day-to-day -day decision making of anything associated with that animal. The second aspect is the financial aspect. So we're usually looking at how much money does it cost to own that pet. So the types of things we're looking at are food, veterinary care, grooming, and equipment. Once people start adding up all of those costs, they realize that that could be a significant amount of money over a period of time. Without planning for the financial aspect of it, if people simply give their pets to somebody when they die, they have now straddled that person with a financial burden. So pet trusts allow for us to alleviate that burden. What we put in place is a trustee that handles any funds associated to be used for the care of those animals. Now, the trustee can either make outright distributions after the owner has died, or it can be structured payments over a period of time, or it can be discretionary at, as the trustee determines and with additional funds being available for in case of emergencies. So the pet trust can be as simple or as complex as an owner wishes it to be. It doesn't have to be anything fancy and it doesn't have to be large sums of money. What I encourage people is just to start considering some of the planning associated with where is my animal going to live after I'm gone? And how is that animal going to be provided for financially? Once you've considered those basic aspects, you can come up with a basic plan that covers those animals' needs.